Okay, let's turn on the slideshow. All right. Are you pretty excited about your life now? Yeah, you know, over the weekend I was, uh, <clears throat> over the weekend I applied for a bunch of places to rent in Boston and uh, it's a little daunting, you know, I gotta, I should probably call all the renters like on the phone and be like, hi, I'm so-and-so, introduce myself. Um, but it's exciting. It's like exciting looking at pictures of these places and thinking like it could, that's going to actually be my apartment. And the only one per, the only one paying for me is me. Like, you know, like I started my education however many years ago and it's coming to a close. Hi. Hi, sorry. All good, doesn't matter. I don't understand your anger with shutting the door, but that's besides the point. <laughs> no, I know. I, it, like, every, like, yeah, I am angry. Okay, all right, I don't, that's fine, whatever. You, just don't take it out on me, I don't care. Okay, so today we're actually talking about tracking on the internet. Because uh, past few sessions, inevitably someone will ask me, hey, so I went onto the site and it tracked me, what's gonna happen? That's so annoying. It is very annoying, but I'm gonna try to clear up some details about that now. So that's what we're gonna do now. So. Today we're going to be talking about tracking on the internet, who does it, why they do it, etc. Hopefully the choir doesn't appear in the background, but if they do, I will project. I see you rolling your eyes, Grace. I agree. Okay. <clears throat> so tracking. We're going to be going over who, how, when, what, where, and why. Who is tracking, how they are tracking, when they track you, what information they are tracking, where on the internet they track you and why they're tracking. And of course, during this whole thing, if you have any questions or if I say something that's confusing or I use some jargon, then you can of course stop and address them. So let's start with who does the tracking. Okay. So there are a few firms on the internet and their entire shtick is, or a lot of what they make money from is tracking. So you've heard of Google, you've heard of Facebook, and I'm gonna explain this diagram at the bottom in a moment. But can somebody tell me where does Facebook make most of its money? Does anybody know? Advertising. advertising. Now, does anybody know why Facebook is able to make so much money from advertising? They track what we're looking for. They track it, exactly. They know a lot of details about it. So what Facebook does is they are partly a social media service, so you can connect with your cousins in like France or whatever, who knows. But on the other hand, Facebook is also the world's best repository of information on people. Maybe even more than government records, right? So Facebook, for example, they know who your friends are, they know what your interests are. Um, they know what it is you like to do on the weekend. They know who you hang out with. They know a lot of intimate details about your life, more than you might care to know. Um, and the thing is, all around the internet, if there is a website that has a little button on it that says sign in via Facebook. So if there is a website completely unaffiliated with Facebook, but it has a little log in with Facebook button, that button, does more than just allow you to log in, that button is actually like a little sentry unit for Facebook. So if there is a website with a Facebook button on it, that button is, a, is essentially performing reconnaissance for Facebook. And I'll explain how that process occurs. But that's, yeah, for sure. That's a great question. If you don't use Facebook, then my guess is even if you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook is still creating a fingerprint, and I will explain what a fingerprint is. Facebook is still creating a fingerprint of you, even if you don't have a Facebook account. Really? Yes. That's scary. Suppose I go to a party, right? And uh -huh. I like to take pictures. Yeah. You know, in the group, and then they circulate the picture. Yeah. And it goes into the Facebook. Does that mean I'm sort of implicated? Um, great question. So, I always wondered about that. You know, Yeah. So the thing is, if you don't have a Facebook account, then the person who took that photo can't tag you in the photo. Do you know what that means to tag? 
So if you post something on social media, you can say, I was at this party with my friends, Diane and Grace. And so if you guys have Facebook accounts, I can tag you in the photo, which means if somebody goes to your profile page, they will see the photo that I uploaded. But then sometimes I hear people say, oh, you went to that party because somebody from that group sent it to someone with a face. Yes. And what do you mean by profile? So profile pages, if you have a, I can show you, I mean, here, let's actually take a look. So let's go to facebook.com. Yes, if you're incognito, all this stuff will still go to Google. Give me just a second. I'm gonna show you guys Facebook. Understandable. Um, Facebook is a kind of slimy company. Oh, God damn it. Okay, well. <laughs> We're going to have the Senior Center Magical Choir performing live here on Roosevelt Island. That's fine. Yeah, I, I, I did find it that annoying at first, but I'm going to, whatever. I'm not going to be. I have two. two. <laughs> it's a meditative process. All right. So let's take a look at my, my Facebook profile. So here we have, uh, I took this picture, or actually my friend Allison. You were up there. I was up there at the panorama room. Um, so the bar like next to Cornell Tech, this is a picture of me. I look dashing as usual. Oh my God. Now what I will say is let's take a look at photos, right? So if we go to photos, now what shows up first is photos of me. This isn't even, I didn't even upload these photos. These are other people's photos that have me tagged. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. Literally every single one of these is my mom. So <laughs> for example, here's a photo my mom uploaded back in 2014. Here I am as a small child. I was very, very small. Um, but see, this is my mother uploading a photo, but tagging me in the process. So you can see how you can access this photo from my profile, right? Here's another example. Here's me and my family sitting around at, uh, at uh, lunch at a Greek place. My face looks very tilted for some reason. We'll ignore that. Here's me at graduation. Again, notice the poster is Sofia Ferrero, my mother. And I am tagged in this photo, which means you can access this photo from my Facebook profile. Now, if you don't have a Facebook profile, this doesn't really exist. Now people that use Facebook can still look at these photos and see that you were there, and then they can mention it in conversation. But if you don't have a Facebook account, then it kind of restricts Facebook's ability to compile information on you. But let's get back to the lesson. So even if you don't have a Facebook account, various advertising agencies, or I should say companies that compile information on you in order to create a fingerprint, even if you don't have an account with them, they can still do that. So they collect a lot of information on you and I will tell you exactly what information, but this combination of information is so unique to you that if you, com if you combine seven or eight attributes, it's mathematically impossible for it not to be you. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's extremely unlikely. So I've explained this example in class a few times, but let me, Try it again. Let's use myself as, a, as an example. Let's say that's like 13 million people, okay? So if we're filtering out a group of people that use this computer, I am one person in a group of one to two million people. So that's not very um, specific. All right, let's hone it down a little further. All MacBook Air 2014 users who use, let's see what version of Mac I'm on. Um, all MacBook Air 2014 users who use Mac OS Big Sur version 11.6. So this specific version of Apple software. Now that narrows it down from one to 2 million people down to maybe 14, 15,000 people, right? Okay, so now we're in a group of 14 to 15,000 people. Then, I'm browsing the internet using Firefox. 
So all of the people in that 14 to 15,000 that use Firefox, maybe that condenses it down to two to 3,000, right? We keep, adding, we keep adding attributes. If we add the attribute of where I'm located, so everybody in this 3,000 people that has an IP address in New York, now we're at like 50 to 60 people. And then they combine search history, done. That's like five attributes and it's condensed down to me. So this fingerprint is essentially a list of attributes, what device you're using, what browser you're using, your browsing history, so what you search for, where you're located. And these combination of attributes alongside others mathematically condense down these subsets until it is you. And that's what makes it a fingerprint. Yeah. Location. Yeah. I had location turned off. Yes, you had location turned off. So it's much harder. It's much harder. So I'll explain what that means in a moment, but it is much harder. So Google and Facebook are both companies that make most of their money from advertising because they are so widely used for so many things that they can compile so many specificities of who you are and then sell that to advertisers. So advertisers who post things on the internet, like advertisements for dog food or whatever. Like, do either of you have a dog? Didn't you have a dog? No. Do either of you have a cat? A bird, a fish? Okay, um, whatever, I don't know. If you're into like, I don't know. Shopping. Shopping, very good. And there's even more, like, what do you, what do you guys like to shop for? Well, I'm always, Clothes? I'm always looking at sneakers. Sneakers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so sneakers. sneakers. So you like shopping for sneakers? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know, but like, you know, say you like shopping for sneakers. I'm sure that if you use one specific device, you're getting sneaker ads because sneakers. shoes, sneakers, exactly. Because Google saw you search sneaker shoes. Google learns using machine learning, which we've discussed a few times, that you like sneakers. And then sells that information to advertisers. Always pop up on the other side. Exactly. Exactly. So here I am. Exactly. So now this brings us to the topic of what advertisers do. When you load a website, either on a computer or a phone or a tablet or whatever, it's going to display the contents of the website, but it will also display advertisements. Now, advertisements within the code of a website are basically like, they're holes to be filled. So the website doesn't know what you're into. If you're going to a website that has ads on it that shows you a baking recipe, they don't know what you're in. The baking website has no idea what you're into, but the baking website will outsource the ad. So they'll put a little space on their page and they say, they tell an advertising agency, okay, put an ad here. Then the advertising agency takes over for the website. The advertising agency knows what you like because of their deals with Facebook and Google and other big tech giants like that. They know what you like, and then they fill in the blank for the baking website. If you click on the ad, so if you see a sneaker ad or you see some shopping ad, and you click on it and engage with it, the baking website will make money, the advertising agency will make money, and Google and Facebook will make money. Advertising agencies are playing a game for clicks. So a, a business will pay. It's a business. So a business will pay. They will pay an advertising agency to get their stuff displayed. And you'll see a lot of ads for like Nike and Adidas or whatever. And that's because those are big firms that can afford getting their information displayed every year. It's kind of like watching TV, but I keep sponsors paying for that. Yes, exactly, but with even more specificity. And cookies. And cookies. Cookies are cookies are a big part of it. Cookies are little bits. These are little um, collections of information that are accumulated in your browser over time. And this combination of cookies helps determine who you are. That's why if you go into incognito, the browser will look different. Like, like if you search for something, the results will be different. Or if you go to a website, the advertisements won't be as finely tuned because a lot of these cookies 
that help determine who you are and what interests you have aren't there. Exactly. It's on actually a lot of devices, but I can I can talk about it. Sure, I, I will talk about that. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so, so again, to reiterate, websites have no idea what you're into, but they will outsource it and say, here's a rectangle, put an ad here. And then an advertising agency will fill in the blank with something they know you would like. There is also something called an SDK. I can't lie to you, I don't remember what it stands for, but SDKs are responsible for mobile advertising. So if you see S, D as in David, K, yes. They're responsible for mobile advertisement. So if you see an ad on your phone, it's because an agency, an advertising SDK is doing exactly the same thing, but on a phone. Yeah. You're checking a new something in the news, and in between each paragraph, there's a text. Uh-huh. Got it. It's so annoying. You, you don't have the continuity. Yes, it's very annoying. Yeah. Is, is there any way to stop that? Yes, but not really on a phone. I can show you how to do it on a computer, but not really on a phone. On a phone, it's so way it's harder. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's who is doing tracking. For the most part on the internet, 99.99999% of the time you're getting tracked, it's by these guys. And in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of innocuous. It's just like they're collecting a lot of information on you and then sell and telling you ads. But of course, we should still be concerned that there are private companies collecting all this information on you. There's all, I mean, even now there's a lot of talks about ethics. Um, Mark Zuckerberg and Google execs have had to appear before Congress to testify on these things because there is a growing concern on how much power Google and Facebook have. There are people who say Facebook has more power than most national governments. I would believe, I would believe it too. I would believe it too, seriously. Okay, so that's who does the tracking the most. Are they able to zero in on exactly your identity? Yeah, yeah, depending on what route. They know who you are, they know who you are, and they're smart enough where if you switch devices, they know it's still you using the device. Yeah. And this is done using fingerprinting. That's quite scary. This is quite scary. That's what I mean. Yeah. Now, again, they will justify this by saying that all of this information being collected is only for advertisement purposes. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Exactly. But then you see stuff like Facebook, for example, in 2016. Do you guys hear about the Cambridge Analytica scandal? I might know. So during the 2016 election, Trump had a huge upper hand on Clinton because his advertising on the internet was ruthless and very effective because Facebook was illegally selling or leaking or something information to a British firm called Cambridge Analytica. So Facebook and Cambridge Analytica worked together and Cambridge Analytica assisted the Trump, the Trump campaign in a very subversive way that users didn't even know about. It's probably one of the biggest um, stains on Facebook's record, on Zuckerberg's record especially. Part of why they changed their official company name to Meta is because of stuff like Cambridge Analytica. You can also blame the January 6 riots on Facebook and websites like Twitter. And this collection of information and this extremely specific advertising can be very bad too because Fascists, for example, can just advertise to people they know are vulnerable to becoming fascists. It's a whole game and it's a little, it's very slimy. But okay, so that's who does most of the tracking. How do they do this? Buckle in, I'm gonna show you. So let me take you to a website right now. Let's go to let's go to genius.com. Okay, so I love this website. All it is, is basically a website where you can look up song lyrics. Song the lyrics. So you can look up the lyrics to a song. And a really cool feature of this website is you can click on lyrics and there will be like publicly sourced annotations. So people will like interpret the song. So if you really love a song and you love the lyrics of the song, you can get a unique angle by going to this website and reading the lyrics. Awesome website. I love going here. If I'm really into a song, I'll go here and like 
decipher the lyrics, you know? I think it's fun. Now, let's go ahead. I have an ad blocker, and I'll show you what that is at the end of the lesson. I have an ad blocker on my computer, which prevents this website from displaying advertisements. But let's go ahead and turn it off. So I'm going to refresh the page, and let's see what happens. Now, at the top of the screen, it hasn't yet loaded. There is going to be an ad. It's this big black banner here. It hasn't yet displayed its information. If we scroll down, uh, this isn't really an ad. This is from the website itself. But eventually, we should get an ad. I think my, my connection is just a little bit slow. Now, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you see all this stuff popping up? You can't read it but it's very fast. This website is contacting a bunch of random websites on the internet. There it is. Now here's this ad, okay. So I have this ad for a, uh, let's see, I have this ad, I think for like deodorant or something. And I have this ad for maybe an exercise bike. Now, where did this website get this ad? How did it pull the assets for this ad? Now, in order to display this ad, it needed to show me a video, right? It didn't just materialize the video out of the name. It had to get that video from somewhere. Have you been? No, oh, okay, don't worry about it. So here, for example, we see this like video, right? It's a, a, an advertisement for Smirnoff, okay? And it's gone, whatever. But there was a little video there. So where did it download the video from? So the way they track you, these agencies, the way that they track you, is by making requests to advertising agencies. So what does that mean? Here's another ad for, let's see, some alcohol, whatever. There's a Guinness ad down here. They just keep playing. So why do they give you all alcohol like at Thursday? You know, I don't know, because I don't really drink that much. <laughs> like, apparently. <laughs> Jeez, I, wow, I feel a little insulted. <laughs> Smeared out. Heineken, what is this? is this? If this is a beer ad, I swear to God, it's a beer ad. Maybe it's a beer ad? I don't know. It looks like it's a Smirnoff ad. It's a goddamn Smirnoff ad. It has to is be. It? No, I think it is. Hold on. It's so like vague, but I'm 90. Yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. There is a Cottonelle ad. I have no idea what this is. I think it might be like a Johnson & Johnson ad or something. Not a very good ad because I still have no idea what it's talking about. UPS? What? No way. Okay, whatever. But we got all these ads. They're flashing and they're appearing. And this website has to show me this media. It has to download the video from somewhere so we could put it on the website, right? Where does it download the video from? So here's what happens. Remember how I told you a website for baking ingredients, right? So you go to the internet and you look up how to bake like a chocolate cake, okay? So the website will show you the instructions for how to bake a chocolate cake, but it will also show you an ad. There will be a rectangle and the website says, put the advertisement here. And then the advertisement agency will throw an ad, okay? So that's what Genius is doing. Genius has no idea what I'm into, but it outsources the advertisements to some agency that does. Now, in order to show me those advertisements, the advertising agency has to go to the server of Cottonell or to the server of Budweiser. It has to go to computers holding that information and it has to download them. So in other words, the advertisement agency goes up to Budweiser, goes up to Smirnov and it says, hand me your ad. I want to put it in the website. So then Smirnov hands the advertisement agency the ad. And then the advertisement agency puts it on the website. Does that make sense? So it goes to Smirnov, it goes to Cottonelle or UPS, grabs the advertisement they want to display, and then puts it onto the website. But this motion of grabbing the ad from them and putting it on the website, this is where information gets passed. So there, so what the advertisement agency is saying is, hey. Augustine wants to see an ad right now. I mean, I don't, but it's saying Augustine needs to see an ad. So let's display an ad for him. And it's going to pass along a lot of information. And let me show you what that is. I'm gonna go into the source code of this website. I'm actually going to go into 
the different network pings. And all that you're seeing here, I know you can't really read it that way, but all of this is not me. I am not making these requests, but the advertisement agency is, these are all requests to grab an ad. So each of these is, oh my God, that chorus gets on my nerves. Anyways, each of these is the advertisement agency going out and downloading an ad, right? Now, let's take a look at one of these requests. Let's see, I think this is one of them. So this, I'm pretty sure, is an advertisement request. So this is a request by the agency to display an ad. Now, one of the pieces of information that it passes along is this. See, we have right here, Mozilla 5.0, Macintosh, Intel, Mac, OS X 10.15, Gecko, Firefox. Okay, so first of all, exactly. One thing, when it tells the advertise, when it tells the company that it needs the ad, it will also pass along who I am and my details. So every time, no, my name isn't there. But what I'm saying is, is that this process of grabbing an advertisement is dripping with my information. Whenever advertisement agencies display an ad, they are adding to their own repertoire of information that they have on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot. And you can see it just keeps coming. Like here? Yeah, so so this is saying what type of computer I have. Yeah. And then there's also, um, well, it's not a whole, okay, I don't know. There's a lot of information here. Request headers. See, maybe there's some more over here. But yeah, see how they're passing, they're, they're telling the agency what device I have and a lot more. Yes. So basically every time an advertisement is displayed on a website while you're browsing the internet, it is added to a history of your browsing history. Yes, but in incognito, it's a little different. And I'll explain. When you're in incognito, it works a little differently and I'll explain how. Yeah. It's essentially the idea of the internet now, it's kind of an unfortunate history. The internet at its advent was supposed to be kind of this, the worldwide web. It was supposed to be this open source thing supported by universities and governments, and you could gain, you could get access to whatever information you wanted. And that's still the case, but there's now this implication that the price you pay for using the internet is surrendering your privacy. Yeah. And uh, remember they were saying about privacy, see uh, more. Uh, uh -huh. They were saying, uh, okay, you don't, you don't want us to, 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 to talk about you. So I said, well, that's good with me. So when I click, okay, it was a row only for California. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah. So California. California, okay, so there's actually some interesting policies in California and in the European Union. So in California, there's the California User Privacy Act, or like the yeah, 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 yeah. California User Privacy. It's like a, no, 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 actually, it's like California is trying to curb this for California, the CCPA. So this is actually a law enacted by the state of California. It's good for them. I mean, I don't know what we have, but it, this is a law enacted by the state of California that says if you're tracking California citizens, they have to consent to it somehow. The European Union has the same thing. They operate a little differently, but California in particular tries to protect its citizens, um, especially minors. But anyways, does that kind of make sense? It's essentially, <clears throat> there's a little hole in the website Advertisement goes here. And whenever they fill in the blank, they are sending forward your information. What information? I'll tell you in a second, but they're sending in a huge compilation of your information that, again, when mathematically combined together, homes in on who you are. Because only a very specific person uses this device, this browser, has searched these things, and is located here. Those combinations of things can point to you. So 
that's kind of how this works. That whole list of things, and I have this in the slides too, so bear with me. Okay, buckle in. So these are actually screenshots from earlier when I went to the same exact website. This is how many, this is how many requests were issued within a span of like maybe two minutes. Okay. So Big Brother is watching. Yeah, exactly. Except Big Brother isn't the government. Big Brother is like Facebook and Google. Okay, watch this. So okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. It's seven. This is all, this is just a list of all the requests. Well, on the bottom, it says how many requests. It counts? Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that, yeah. So 165 requests. Exactly. Now, now, another thing too is in this specific uh, menu, it's also telling you what is being downloaded. So remember how those advertisements feature videos, they feature images. So here you can see a GIF is being downloaded. A GIF is a type of file, it's like a video. Or here we see HTML or uh, it's, HTML. Yeah, so that's like the text that's displayed. XML is similar, yeah. But this is just like the type of file that's being downloaded. You can see how big the file is. So this GIF is 200, 288 bytes. What? That's tiny. But anyways, we can see what kind of assets are being downloaded. But every single time an asset being requested, the arm that requests that information is dripping with the information. Okay. But it's not that it stays on is they know I mean, they keep that information. Well, you are using the, when you close it, 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 Well, yeah. So whatever images it downloads will be deleted like that, like because they don't want to. They don't want it to stay in your computer because it would clog up the machine. But their history of you will stay. So goes to their database. Yes, precisely. Yeah. So these are all requests. So when does this tracking occur? This tracking occurs anywhere on the World Wide Web where Google, Facebook, and other advertising agencies have their hands. So that means if you're on a library's website, or you're on a university system, or you're logging into your hospital, there you're probably not being tracked to the same degree. Because those, adver those websites aren't trying to advertise. We never get, we never got it. That's what I mean. If you go, yeah, so if you go to like the New York Public Library's website, you don't get ads. So there the tracking is not really occurring. Maybe they, maybe, who knows, maybe New York Public Library is just themselves compiling information and then selling it to advertisers, but it's at least not as obvious. But anywhere where you see a tiny little login with Facebook button or even like a like, sometimes there'll be a Facebook, there'll be a little button that says like. Like a little thumb that means you can like the i don't know it's supposed to be a shortcut yeah yeah you go to like a blog and at the bottom of the blog there's like a, a little like this on facebook button the existence of that button even if you don't actually engage with it the existence of that button implies facebook sees you on that website not only facebook but facebook yeah, YouTube, if, yes, exactly, same thing. If there's a little, if there's a YouTube widget, like if there's a YouTube video on a website, YouTube, think about it. The website had to download the video asset from YouTube to display it on the page. Remember what I just said. The website goes to YouTube, grabs the video and brings it back. But in doing so, YouTube learns that you just access the website because the hand grabbing that YouTube video is dripping with, oh, this is Grace. She's looking up sneakers, blah, 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 and YouTube gets uh, it. Yeah. In this case, the person is deliberately affecting this because I went to go to look for advice about our kids, and okay, I clicked on one of them, mm -hmm. and the, the woman was saying uh, that she was sponsored by that company, and uh, she was particularly also asking if you want, you can buy on her site. Uh, uh, Gathering, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, see, but so, and she was, I guess, she, I don't know if she does not get, if she gets paid, but the more people were watching. Yeah, there's, uh, see, advertisers play a game for place. The whole point of this. Personal, uh, 
Right, but, but, she, yeah, but even, she was, uh, yeah, she's commissioned by somebody else to get, yeah, although, yeah. They were commercial, she cannot, cannot take the video, uh, that I don't know. Uh, Those are ads too. Not. Yeah. Long, long term. If you don't cut them, then, then we continue. Like, uh, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so okay. the whole, the whole game here, the whole game is to get you to click things. That's it. That's the, the whole game advertisers are playing is they're trying every which way to make it so you engage with a sneaker ad or you buy the what like just that's what they want. And it works because every time I see something that looks like I'm interested in, I will click on it. That's what I mean. I want to learn. Even if you don't even if you don't buy even if you don't buy the actual product, you the they, there will still be money made because you've engaged with it. So the whole game is for clicks. And if they can add, if they can find more information on you that will figure out a better way to get you to click something or a better way to predict that you will click on something, they will. So any part of the internet that's tied to advertising agencies like Google or Facebook or any of the others that collect your information, that's where you're being tracked. Again, if you're on something like your public library, or you're logging into your hospital to view your medical records, it's less likely that you're being tracked because those, are, those websites don't display advertisements. Okay. What are they tracking? So I'm telling you about this digital fingerprint, right? And I have explained how certain combinations of attributes, when combined, increasingly hone in on who you are. Only you have a very, you, each of you has a very specific set of attributes. You use this device, you use this browser, you use these things, so on and so forth. Each of you, when you combine all these, at, these attributes together, they create Diane or Grace or Vian. So what does that include? That includes IP address. So, this actually will change every few months. So the, the, the IP address of my phone, my laptop, all that, every few months it will shift. As will the IP address of the router in my apartment. So if you have a router at home, it has an IP address. And over time, it will change. Every few months, it will just shift. Yes, it has to do that because of some architectural thing. But it will shift. But that doesn't matter because everything else the fingerprint has, they'll just they'll just be like, oh, okay, Grace's IP has just changed. Let's log the new one. That's it. If you're in a hospital system or you're in some kind of high security area like government, IP addresses will change every few days, but it still doesn't matter. MAC address. So this is a little different from an IP address. It can't change on a device. However, the legality of the the legality of tracking somebody's MAC address is a lot tougher. You're not supposed to, basically, but there are ways around it. So MAC address, search history. This is pretty big. So they know, you know Grace is like, oh, well, what's the newest Nike sneaker? Whatever, like, like they know you're like sneakers. They know I love computers or history or video games. So they know those things about me based on the things that I search. So this will be added to my fingerprint. Device info. So this includes the model that you're using. So MacBook, iPhone, tablet, whatever. It includes how big the screen is, which is more important than you would think. So it shows exactly the resolution of the screen. The operating system you're using. So Windows, Mac, Linux, is it a mobile device, whatever. Hardware info, so what kind of graphics card do you have? What kind of processor do you have? What kind of random access, like, like literally they can see the components that are in your machine. Again, we are really, we're like seven bullet points in because this is a header, but even just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that, those seven combined will probably point to one very specific person, right? Okay. Browser info. So this means what browser are you using? So are you using Firefox? Are you using Chrome? Are you using Safari? Are you using Opera? 
Microsoft Edge, whatever. What, what browser are you using? And then what, oop, what version of the browser are you using? So are you using Firefox 64, Firefox 65? Are you using Chrome 31, Chrome 32? And then at that point, Chrome 31.1, Chrome 31.2, whatever. So what version, right? Age. They probably know roughly how old you are. Maybe not to a T, but roughly how old you are, what kind of demographic hole you fall into. Or they also know what generation you're part of. And then based on that, they're like, oh, well, people in Gen Z and millennials are going to be interested in one thing. And then people who are more like you know, baby boomers will be interested in another. So they kind of know your age, your gender. They probably have that figured out. Race, so they also probably have that figured out. Occupation, so what is it you do for work, right? Um, and this is a lot of this is compiled because of your search history. Interests, so what is it you're interested in? Do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? Do you have any hobbies that you could advertise to? Location history. So this is like, were you where in New York do you like to hang out? If you like to hang out around like near NYU, they'll advertise some NYU bars, right? Yes, and then yes, if you do that on no, you can do it on you can do it on computers too. If you do it, it makes it way harder to track location. Right. Um, relationships to other people. So this means if you have, if you're friends with someone on social media, then a very important part of your identity is your social circle, right? Because depending on your social circle, that's going to dictate your own interests, your probably your political views, you know, whatever. Like if they know who your friends are, and they know their interests, that contributes greatly to their understanding of who you are, right? Even if you don't have social media, some places will even track if two devices are next to each other for a long time. So for example, if, I don't know, if like Vivian and I get coffee for an hour somewhere, they'll see that my phone was close to Vivian's phone. Yes, and then they know that we are kind of part of the same social circle or something like that. And other information. So I know this might scare the shit out of you. Like, it's a lot of stuff. And this is a lot of different attributes to keep track of, right? I mean, again, mathematically speaking, a small combination of these will point to you. What do we do about it? I don't know. <laughs> I, know I mean, we see, it's kind of interesting. We're seeing shifts in understanding of privacy. People used to care a lot less about this, but people in late in these recent years have been very much more aware of this. And it's affected not just public policy, but it's also affected how corporations, believe it or not, conduct themselves. Facebook and Google, they still shamelessly compile all this information and sell it wherever they want. That's that's what they do. But Apple. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple has that creepy stuff with the tracking devices, right? That's its whole own thing, but let's ignore that for a second. If you look at Apple's advertising trends in the last three to four years, do you know what a huge point of their advertising is? They'll say that iPhones and Apple computers are very good for privacy. And it's true, a lot of internal corporate policy that Apple adopts or, or design philosophies that Apple puts into its devices are centered around protecting user privacy. So let me give you an example. Within the past year, Facebook, I think it was like, or I'm sorry, Apple created iOS version 14 or 13 point something. So they released a new version of the operating system for the phone, the iPhone, and what this change did is it forces apps that are trying to collect information, they have to display a consent form first. They have to first show a little window that says, do you consent to having your location tracked? Or do you consent to having your information collected? Or do you, whatever. There has to be a pop-up that appears on the phone asking for your consent, especially for location history. So, they added this change 
to the iPhone. Do you know what happened to Facebook? Literally within the next like one to two days, the value of Facebook stock plummeted, I think around 30%, literally within a day. Because Facebook, as I've explained, makes a boatload of money from tracking you with your consent, but really because part of using their platform entails collection of information. But when Apple did this, it meant if you opened Facebook or Messenger on your phone, Facebook couldn't be like, hey, it's time to figure out where he's located. They would have to ask you first. And a lot of users are saying, well, I don't want to, well, I'm not giving you my location. In fact, most people were saying they didn't want to give information. And of course, this did not make Facebook very happy. So let's take a look at this. Facebook, let's see. Facebook um, statement on Apple. Okay. So Facebook released an open letter, and I think it's kind of funny, a little sad or pathetic. Um, Facebook released this open letter. Now, here's the angle they took. It's called speaking up for small businesses. So Facebook, it is true, actually, that Facebook, let's see, they actually released like a statement statement, let's see. Facebook statement on Apple. So Facebook released like a whole like statement saying Apple sucks because they're making us do this. Um, here it is, here it is, here it is. Have Apple versus the free internet. Um, <laughs> which is just kind of ironic. Um, so I know you guys can't read it. I'll, I'll read a part of it for you. At Facebook, small businesses at, wait, at Facebook, small business is at the core of our business. More than 10 million businesses use our advertising tools each month to find new customers, hire employees, and engage with their communities. So in response to Apple restricting Facebook's ability to just grab your information whenever, they took the angle of, well, if you weaken our ability to collect information, you are weakening our ability to advertise which hurts small businesses because small business advertising on Facebook. Okay, whatever. But what I'm trying to point out here is Apple has really tried to become a crusader for personal privacy. Like that's kind of a big part of their marketing now. And it's not just stuff like this. For example, do you know how hard it is to break into one of these things? You know how it's, it is insanely difficult the FBI did a sting on some drug kingpin yeah. somewhere in the US. I've, I've mentioned this. The FBI did this sting here. So the Amer American police caught this drug kingpin, okay? And he had an iPhone. And they knew that if they unlocked his iPhone, they would then gain access and a lot of very incriminating evidence on other people in the drug supply chain. So the FBI went to Apple and said, hey, uh, can you like unlock this phone for us? You know what Apple said? Nope. They knew the guy was a drug lord, didn't care. They wouldn't unlock it. The only way Apple was able to, or the only way the FBI was able to get that phone open was by shipping it to Israel, who had a very, Israel has incredibly good cybersecurity. And they were able to use an extremely specific software exploit to break into the phone, which Apple then patched. So this, I'm telling you right now, a pain in the ass to break into. There is literally, it is literally inscripted onto the hardware, not even the software, but there is literally in the mechanics of the, the electronics of this machine. If you screw up in entering the passcode, let me show you what I mean. Let's see. This thing, right, the passcode. If you screw this thing up 10 times, the phone will wipe itself clean. What do you mean by wipe itself? It will literally delete everything on the phone. Yes. If I were to screw up my passcode 10 times in a row, which is really hard to do, by the way, because yeah, that's this is more so if someone steals your phone and they want to break it. If you screw up the passcode 10 times, it is literally inscripted into the hardware that it will nuke itself. It will just delete everything. Doesn't matter if your grandma who works at a bake sale or 
drug lord in California. It will wipe your entire phone clean. So what's interesting is I know this might it's the whole this whole lecture might instill a sense of hopelessness in you, which is understandable. But you should at least know that there are shifting trends in how corporations view this. I have a question. Yeah. You know, those things are pretty expensive. So when I see things in high phone, what could you fix? I mean, great question. Um, one thing they can do, one thing a lot of a lot of thieves will do if they steal a phone. But if they try to use the phone, they can't find it because I doubt yeah, if they have a new phone. No, it 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 nukes itself and becomes useless. So it literally, it literally like eviscerates itself. That's a great question. So, what does someone gain by selling your phone? You can sell it on eBay for parts. So, oh, that's it. yeah, that's one thing you can do. Yeah, right. So, I'll give you an example. One time, my dad wanted to buy a new phone, so he bought online. He thought he thought he found a really good deal. Uh, it was like an iPhone 8 plus with like a big screen, something like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I bought it, came in the mail, and then the iPhone was like, all right, Greg. And my dad's like, wait, what the hell? My name is Mauricio. And he's like, and the iPhone's like, all right, Greg, go ahead and put in your passcode. None of us know what the hell. We don't know Greg. We don't know who he put his passcode is. More than likely, that phone was stolen and then resold on eBay for parts. What the hell that even means, I don't know, but you can sell, you can resell a stolen phone and trick people. It's like, it's another form of a scam, whatever. Okay. So that's fingerprinting. Where, I already explained this, just wherever on the internet that they have tracking implements, they can track you. And why? There you go. Money. Make the big bucks. Oh hell yeah, make the big Look dollars. Oh, I love this picture. I, whenever I do this, like I do this, I always like just look up, I'm just like, Dude holding cash stock photo, and then I get stuff like this. I love stuff like this. I actually have one of those necklaces. You do? <laughs> yeah. I remember when I first arrived in the country, I was like, and then I saw the people with those big feet, and I put two or three, and then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine. Did you show my fingers? No, he's just a random guy. I literally, I literally, I just looked up dude holding money, and it's like, it came, this picture came up. But truth of it is, all this fingerprinting, like, even if I barely ever click on ads, I don't think I ever click on ads, to be honest with you. But even if I click like one ad per year or something like that, still excellent for the ad campaign. Another thing too, I won't even click on the ad, but I'll get an ad for Gatorade or something. And then I'm like, and then somehow because of my, you know, capitalism black brain, my brain will be like, hmm. I want Gatorade now. So then later on, I'll go to Dwayne Reed and I'll buy a Gatorade. Who knows? Maybe Gatorade is like, hmm, that's funny. We just advertised to Augustine. And then like six hours later, he bought a Gatorade at Dwayne Reed. But that's only if you use your phone to That's true. There has to be a connection. Very good thinking. That's what Facebook Yeah, right. You know, you're saying they're all Oh, yeah, yeah, no, If you go to a movie, hi. Hello. If you go to a movie theater, like the beginning of the movie theater, it'll just advertise Coke products. Yeah. And they, in the, it's really funny, though, like just this massive movie screen, and it projects like it literally is, like zooms in on the Coke, and you can hear the fizzling. And it's like, it's very creepy. I don't like it at all. That's the way mine works. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So capitalism yeah. rat break. But yes, why is this? All these trackers that I've described, that's why they do it. Makes them money. It certainly makes Google money, certainly makes Facebook money. Mark Zuckerberg, when he originally created Facebook, he didn't want ads on it because ads would remove like coolness. If you were using social media and you saw an advertisement, you'd be like, oh, damn it, I don't want to see the stupid ad. It makes the website look crappy. But then he realized if you put ads on something as big as Facebook, you can make so much money. And that's what he did. He's, he was the youngest billionaire for a few years. Yeah. Right. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention who else can track your information? Yes. Let's address the elephant in the room. Mr. Burglar Man or Hacker Guy, whatever, can in fact track you online. He can steal your information. This is very true. Now, 
On a totally unrelated note, every year you have a 0.0002% chance to get struck by lightning. <clears throat> Fun fact is this chance actually tends to increase if you love hugging telephone poles, trees, and metal poles during thunderstorms. That percentage actually goes up. Fun fact. So what you need to know is when you browse the web, don't be the guy that hugs the telephone poles. Like, yeah, anybody can get hacked, but you're far more likely to get hacked if you go to shady websites. And we've, I've done a few lectures on how to avoid those. But just know that this guy has an extremely low chance of showing up unless you're a government official. Just don't be stupid. Don't click on shady links. If anything has the word <clears throat> free in it, treat it with some skepticism. Don't hug the telephone poles. Okay. So you guys had a few questions. The last thing I'll touch on, one, incognito mode. What incognito mode does, let's go ahead and I'll open it right now. Now you say that's only um, for Apple? Nope. Oh, for Apple. I'm, here it is right now. So pretty much every browser has an incognito mode or something equivalent. So in Firefox, it's called private window. All it does, yeah, in Firefox, it's called private window, but it's the same thing. All incognito does is launches a browser with no cookies. So it's almost like a fresh browser right off the, the rack. I don't know what to say. But there's no cookies. Now, what that means is, yeah, yeah. So, private window is the same thing as incognito mode. It's the same thing as incognito mode. So, at pretty much every single browser has it. Chrome has incognito mode. Safari has like private browsing. Firefox has private window, but they all do the same thing. Yeah. But even though I'm in incognito, I use it all the time. I use Safari. I get cookies all the time. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if you, <clears throat> when you close your incognito window, yeah, so that version of the browser is dead. And then you open a new incognito window. But that's continuous Yeah, but ba okay, here's how this works. Part of what makes tracking so effective is over time. Oh, over time. Over time. It, so I use a normal basic browser. I don't use incognito, to be honest with you. So my computer, pretty much all my devices are full of cookies. So little bits, of little tiny files in my machine that help advertisers know that it's me, okay? But if you open up incognito mode, incognito does not have access to those cookies. In fact, incognito doesn't have any cookies at all. So these little files that point to you don't exist in incognito. They're not stored. They are, but they're not relevant to incognito. Now, as you use, as I, if I start browsing using this private window, I will start gaining cookies. But then guess what? I close it, cookies are gone. Those cookies are deleted. And then if I reopen another one, like, like later, it's like I start over from normal. There's no cookies. So what this does is, incognito lessens the effects of tracking. It doesn't remove it but it lessens the effects. So for example, you may have heard your friends say that you should use incognito mode when buying a plane ticket. And this is true, because here's what happens. If I'm on a normal browser and I look up flight to Los Angeles, okay? And then tomorrow, again, I search up flight to Los Angeles. And then the day after I search flight to Los Angeles. Guess what happens? if I try to buy a flight to Los Angeles after four days of searching for it? The price goes up. If I try to buy a ticket to Los Angeles, it'll be $350 instead of 300. Because they know, hey, this guy is looking for a, a ticket to Los Angeles. He seems to really want one. So let's increase the price a little bit. If you use a private window or incognito mode or whatever you want to call it, that those cookies that track that you've been looking for a flight to Los Angeles, they're not there. So the price will be 300. That's one example. 
So that's what income unit does. And then there was another question. Um, right, so location data, like that's a pretty big one. People are very sensitive about location data, right? Like they don't like being tracked location-wise. So if you disable location tracking on a device, then it's basically legally, advertisers cannot log the fact that you're in New York City, right? Yeah, yeah. I tried to look for a subway or a bus, it'll tell me for my location that's not working. Really? Because I haven't turned off. That makes sense. Okay, sure. So, yeah. Um, because it doesn't know where I am. Yeah, so location data does actually have its uses. Like if you're looking to go to. Brooklyn for some reason. You know? Yeah, you can still do it exactly the same way. Yeah. So that's today's lecture on tracking and advertising. One more question. What is Twitter? Twitter is a social media website. They call themselves a micro blogging website. Basically, a tweet, which is a post on Twitter, can only have if you have an account, yeah. It can only have maximum 500 letters in it. So posts are very small. You can post pictures, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, Twitter is like, it's a social media platform. But it's very effective. It's very effective. And because- When you want to get like, I don't know, January 6th, they need Yeah, they did. Yeah, Twitter has a lot to answer for. Twitter has a lot of a lot to answer for for January 6th. Mm -hmm. And for Trump in general, I mean they only banned him in, and they only banned him in the wake of January 6th, but you know. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I just wanted to Okay. First of all, have any of you ever um, googled yourself? Yeah. Totally. I, I googled it. Yeah. What's out there? I mean, there's I mean all your business is on there already. And, and what galled me is from the very beginning, it's like, you know, no one asked me for my permission to put my business on there. Yeah. And being a public servant, there's even more of my information on there. So, you know what? You have no control over what's on the internet because you can't erase it, you can't take it away. Yeah. So, Grace, yeah. one more thing here is something called white station. Yeah. Which is like a, a telephone directory. Mm -hmm. And I, in one of the classes previous to coming here at uh, public school, they actually mentioned it. And if you put yourself as a white agent, mm -hmm. this, everything comes up. Oh, yeah, everything. My staff. So, so my my salary, so your net worth. My your, net worth. Really? Your yeah. salary and net worth? I'm a city group. It's public information. Would that be true for me then? Are you a city employee? City employee. No. City employee. Probably not. Public information. Like school teachers, for example. Yeah, you can really? you can if you work for the city really? and it's public information. I know exactly how much like my English teacher from high school makes. Because yeah. it's publicly available. Yeah. Public information. Yeah. This is just this is just a a symptom of living in the global age. Yeah. And it has my brother, my sister, my sister in law, all my whole family lives there. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Girl, let me tell you something. That's why I don't, you know, that's the trouble. I don't, I can't worry about it because it is what it is. This is that's how I see it. Not. That's I how I see I it. Can't worry about In 1648, we'd have to deal with like getting smallpox and dying. Today, we don't have to deal with smallpox, but um, at least not yet until the anti vaxxers do their thing. But um, now we have to deal with, uh, you know, not really Big Brother, but more like a series of Big Brothers. There's nothing out there that, you know, you can't make it. Like, for instance, when my, I, I'm sorry, this is the last thing I say. When my, my, I have a brother that passed away, after he passed away, his social security is on there. That's why they, they do all this stuff after people die. There was so much information. It was like horrible. That is horrible. horrible. That's all. Awesome. You know, it's like there's no more privacy. It's like just open your windows and open your door and just. Let it all in. Capitalism. Oh, I Google my I Google my brother, my sister, I Google everybody because you know what? It's out there. What what did you use for fake names? 
It doesn't matter. Think about the fingerprint. Your name is just one list. It's just one attribute. Think I said that we'd be, that we'd be able to make your information for social security number. No, social security number is not part of it. Let's be very clear. Very Social security, social security is not part of that fingerprint. Social security. That's never come up. But even still, like like your interests and stuff like that. Um, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. Just it's like it doesn't really matter to advertisers. Advertisers, if you if you call yourself Augustine Ferrero or dumb idiot Nick idiot face, like they're still gonna advertise the same things to me because no matter what name I go by, they know I like computers and stuff like that. So yeah, um, basically the FTC needs to strike down these companies with the wrath of God. And that's, and that's not gonna happen because there's money involved. Yeah. Anytime there's money involved, it ain't happening. Yes. I mean, if you mean my followers, like social media. Yes. Yeah, that's um. This is my Instagram. That's fine. My Instagram. This is my Instagram profile. Instagram is focused more so on pictures. Instagram is centered around pictures. Yes. I think you can change it. Yes. Well, no, you can. You can. You can. Instagram is actually what? Yes, from like two years ago, but yeah. yeah. This is like this is like two years ago. I was in. Um, I know my hair is different. Um, I don't have facial hair here. This is this is from two years ago. This is when I was at this was at a bar, like kind of near the Google Building on like Fourteenth and Tenth. Somewhere like lower, I don't know what you call that neighborhood, but Chelsea. I was somewhere in Chelsea here. This is like my LinkedIn photo. It's like what I use whenever I'm like at like whenever I'm like applying anywhere else. I need to update it though. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. A very agreeable photo. What's that? 